everyone. I just got to the International Space Development Conference. Just had an amazing panel this morning on space exploration and its effect in the media and how media is also affecting uh, space exploration. And there's so many cool things to see here. So I'm going to show you guys around. And there's a whole bunch of talks also happening right now. There's four different rooms. This is absolutely huge. come back here and talk to the people that work here but first I gotta head upstairs there's a few awesome talks happening and I want to go catch those let's go Okay, where would that be? No, we only have two modules that do feel seven. All the other modules are This is so cool. The engine mounts here. Uh. This is Vulcan 2, or Ignis 2, the engine we've been working on. Oh, which rocket is this one for? This Vulcan? is for the Vulcan 2 rocket. Okay. So the engine's name is Ignis. The this rocket Ignis. we're flying it on is Vulcan 2. Okay. Vulcan 1 was the first um, rocket flown with a 3D printed engine by student group last two years ago. Wow. That's so cool. Um, do you know how many pounds of thrust this is going to have? 800. 800 pounds of thrust. Very cool. NASA. You guys are sponsored by NASA? That's awesome. NASA can't do our instruments. That's awesome. A lot of other people have supplied our valves and helped us with some of the plumbing stuff to do with cryogenic stuff. Um, so CryoQuick helped us get our tanks certified. Okay. Like eight gallons of you know, liquid, pure stuff that just makes things explode no matter what. Yes, so yeah. Hard, like liquid nitrogen? No, liquid you guys oxygen. use that? Liquid oxygen? Uh, nitrogen for our keeping things cold. Yeah, right, right, not so much for right. Okay. So, yeah, so we use that to that and water to like simulate the flow without allowing it to That's amazing. We actually hot fire in June. You guys are doing a hot fire in June? Yeah, we are. Oh LPL, okay. They're a graduate group. Um, they are testing area challenges. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And we have a place where everyone comes and is willing to share their data with us and put it online and access and everyone can learn and figure out, you know, from each other. So we can all try like one tiny tweak. Yeah. We're all doing it at the same time. We can have it in one year, like a totally different idea of how to do this. Yeah, no, this is one of the engines, right? You guys are working on Is that from NASA? I see NASA's logo on it. They sponsored us. They sponsored it. Okay. Their baby. So we have the Colossus team, which is designing this. It's kind of like a super, 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 uh, like, robust, reusable rocket that just doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> like, this is the engines. Okay. Vulcan, I heard about Vulcan yesterday. All day yesterday. Whoa, look at all that code. That's all code, right? No, that's not code. No, that's not code. Let's see that. I mean, we're, we're, so we have basically like a web server so that we can, it's just a Raspberry Pi, but we can, that way we can stream data to whoever is actually. Wow. Oh, Dennis is back. Awesome. Yeah, so this is our, one way to control it. For virtual panel, we have a manual override, big red button. 
which is always fun. Sweet. Which is actually kind of hacked right now so that all the pretty lights don't turn off. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that's definitely pretty. I'm sure everyone walks by and they're like, ooh, wow. Look at all the wires and the circuit board. Love it. Yeah, my quality data, the stream's in here. You save it. Uh, the people who are testing the engine can actually watch it uh, from their computers. If you actually check the Wi Fi right now, you can see Colossus on there. Really? So, yeah, so we actually have that. Um, That's so cool. Let me see if we can show you real quick. Okay. Hi, Dennis. How's it going? Hello. Hello. Pretty good. Just back from the panel. Awesome. How was the yeah. panel? It was good. It's hard to get. Wow. Uh, That's awesome. And then what? It, I'm sorry. What is the propulsion that you guys use? Is it liquid? Is it solid? It's, yeah, it's liquid propulsion. Yeah. Liquid. So, okay. Liquid oxygen and yeah, RPM yeah, yeah. or jet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Is any of it 3D printed? It's all. So, all of it is 3D, 3D printed. 3D printed. And then you just weld the, the pieces together. Well, yeah. So the engine is 3D printed. Every, all this stuff yes. is yes. steel. Like, it's every, it's not, like, it's kind of, that's but so the cool. Is, is, is made in the process called direct metal laser sintering. Okay. Uh, so it's basically they lay out powder, they use a laser to melt it into the shape and lay out more powder. So cool. Fiber bow ties? That's what this is? That's awesome. It's called like the contoured, contoured bow tie. The contour? Yeah, see how it has like a sanded effect to it. Yeah. Wow. Can I touch it? What does it feel like? Whoa. Oh, that's so smooth. And then this is like cloth right here? Yeah. That's like, okay. Because that would probably be a little hard to tie a carbon fiber, a stiff carbon fiber around the neck, so there's a soft cloth. We actually gave one of these to Bill Nye, and he refuses to wear it because he only wears full. Where he can tie it himself? Yeah. Wow. He considers this a clip on, so he won't wear it. Oh, I can understand that. And then skateboards. Do you guys know like the durability of this of a skate of the skateboard being made of carbon fiber? On our website, or the uh, YouTube channel, of carbon fiber? we actually take it yeah. to the shooting range and it stops bullets. That's not, not so everything, cool. but you can see us pry one out. Of, uh, what? This could stop bullets, guys. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, okay, and this one has a motor on it, right? Yeah, so this is a collaboration with a company out of Singapore called Art. Art. Where we made a custom cut and hole pattern for their electronics package that they integrate. So we ship them the, the decks and they finish it in Singapore and ship it worldwide. That is so cool. Are you guys selling them here today? We are. Se we don't have any of the ARCs. Okay. We are selling the our skateboards, uh, complete packages. Wow. The jumbo versions of the puzzles that we're selling on our Kickstarter campaign. And so this is actually 130 layers of upcycled aerospace grade pre-preg carbon fiber. So it's literally the same material that comes off the production lines of rockets and space planes. That's crazy. It's like having a rocket, but it's like there. <laughs> Ace Division A. Awesome. We build space inspired products made from upcycled carbon fiber that we collect from the waste streams of spaceships, rockets, airplanes. Um, so it's all stuff that would normally get sent to the landfill. We collect that and turn it into awesome products um, that are functional and look great. Uh, we started out making skateboards uh, three years ago and branched out into office supplies, uh, flat sheets, and we do contract manufacturing for companies that want to get cool stuff made from carbon fiber. That is super cool. So this would be like a stand? Yeah, it's a laptop, a laptop stand that you uh, wow. definitely have our Kickstarter going for our office product line. Uh, Sweet. It's on Kickstarter now, so if you're interested in any of the puzzles, uh, office products, go to Kickstarter now, check it out. Kickstarter. Head on over to Kickstarter, guys. I'll put the link in, in the chat in a second. So I'm also recording my phone. Awesome! So, luck may have a lot to do with it, I, I liken it to the, the test program that we put together to truly round out 
most of the complexities that were um, we saw early on. We, we test um, fired the engines over 500 times. We got down a single test element and then stat test a number of times as well. So we were able to really flesh out any problems that we might have seen in the in the uh, propulsion system. Um, and lo and behold, there is fire that sometimes comes out the wrong place. So we've had those issues too. But This one is here. This one is, let me see here. I'm just trying to. For these? The necklace. Uh, 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 get a picture of you in front? Okay. One, two, three. Awesome. Uh, different speakers, there's been separate activations, there's been so many things that are set up here. 
I'm just gonna give you guys first a rundown. Hello, how's it going? Great, how are you? Doing really well. I'm doing an Instagram live. You guys wanna say hello? Hello. 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 Which what is this? We're deep space industries. Deep space industries. You mind if you, I ask you guys? Asteroid mining? Yes. That's awesome. Tell me a little bit about that. Are these pieces of asteroids? These are asteroid simulants that we're producing. Asteroids, how come you're doing asteroid simulants? Yeah, because the particular asteroids we're going for are quite rare on this planet. Therefore expensive and you can't go around crushing them up, burning them up, and driving them. That's so interesting. So you can do that with stuff that is made to be the same as that. And are you trying to study... Uh, I guess the composition of these to understand maybe yeah, what well, asteroids in space are like? Yeah, we're hoping that those are accurate and if so, then we can extract water out of these just like we could those. Water, magnesium, iron, ah, stuff like that. We can also use for, them as building materials, make bricks out of them, make heat shields, make aero brakes, make radiation shields, make a nice little gray igloo if you want. A great igloo? Sure, why not? That would be fun. Um, is this what would be considered part of space mining? Yes, that is definitely what it is. Yeah? Why do you think space mining is important? Because even if launch costs drop down as much as it looks like they're dropping, it's still expensive to get stuff up there. Yep, it is. And if it you is. make it up there, it's not about bringing stuff down to Earth. It is about finding the stuff out there, making stuff that will be used up there. I agree. I agree completely, especially, too, if we plan to become an interplanetary species. You can't not. Exactly. You've got everything that's in our beautiful blue ball, yep. and then you've got everything outside of it. There's a lot more in the universe outside than there is in. Yeah, there and is. And also, if we can get to the point where we're, we're utilizing resources that are out there instead of here, then we don't have to have a bunch of open pit mines and stuff like that yep. on Earth. We can exactly. actually clean it up and make it pristine and beautiful for all the generations to enjoy. That'd be incredible, yeah, because either way, like a lot of the stuff here on Earth is pretty finite, would you say? Um, are there some things that you think are we're not, producing? I don't think we're going to run out of things. Okay. Like, a case in point is do you know what saved the whales from uh, hunting? Save the whales? No, I don't know. So, I mean, I've heard the term save the whales they quite were a hunting, lot. But... They were hunting whales for their oil. They were using the oil for lamps at night. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, in the cities. Right. So they had hunted them a lot, and they were going to keep on hunting them. What ended that, within 10 years, the whaling industry collapsed completely. Wow. The discovery of kerosene. Mm. Kerosene lamps were much cheaper, better, and just, just better yeah. than whale oil lamps, and that collapsed the demand for them. Wow. What saved the remains of the, tree, of the forests in Europe was the discovery of coal. Because before the discovery of coal, people were burning firewood for their fuel, for keeping themselves warm at night, for yep. cooking. Yeah. And by discovering coal, they shifted to burning coal. Now, wow. it had its own problems, but it saved the forests. It did, yep. And by moving into solar and other renewables and, and nuclear and things like that, we can in turn stop using the coal. Yep. And by doing asteroid mining, we can save other parts. That's amazing. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rick. Oh, My name's Athena. It was a pleasure. Yeah, it was such a pleasure speaking with you. And then again, the name of your company Deep is Space Industries. Deep Space Industries. Check them out, guys. That is super cool. And are these uh These are paintings? artworks produced by our resident artist, Brian Burstein. That is beautiful. He is gorgeous. And he's got a website called spacehabs.com. Spacehabs.com. Okay, awesome. Oh, there we go. I see the name. That one's awesome. my favorite. This one? Yeah. That's so like cool. Are that you part. Scottish? Yeah. Uh, close Ooh. enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you very okay. much. I'll be there helping manage everything. And there'll be music, dancing. Music, art. dancing. Is this a space party? Yes. UFO festival. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Do you want to keep that or give it to I'll hold on to it. I'll definitely hold on to it. I it will.
For display, this is a rough sketch. Rough is that good? <laughs> That's, no, it's paper. It's paper. It's paper. It's oh, okay. Um, and eventually, um, this will tell me things. Right. In terms of measurements. Um, and so I can go into a, a program like uh, Lightwave or Moto or Rhino or whatever and start making the STL files. Ah, I see. Okay. Gotcha. I don't do that now. I made the STL just to make it like it, make it in a physical model. Mm -hmm. And you already have a physical yeah. model, and you're paying actually the reverse well, action. It's, it's a rough. Right. Yeah, it's a, I, I rough is pretty good. I, I don't like doing roughs on the computer because I want to hold it in my hand. True, true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You not only see it. I, and the nice thing about this model is uh, it's on a central core. Oh, so okay. the parts can come apart. Come easily, slide uh, outside. Gotcha. So it's almost like Legos. If, right, right. if you want to build a ship that goes to the moon for two weeks, right. you don't need all the fuel.